Good morning guys. In my last video, I brought you to the hot deserts of Egypt, and in this video, I'm taking you to the deep north of China. Let's go to Harbin. <laughs> of the province of Heilongjiang, which is the northernmost province of China, up by the border of Russia. Very importantly, I do want to thank our sponsor today, the backpack company, Waterfly. Guys, without Waterfly, this video literally wouldn't be uploaded right now. They made this trip happen and they made it possible, so thank you to Waterfly and more about that later. So when I decided to go to Harbin, I was just kind of intimidated by the idea of this extreme cold, and for some reason, I thought that if there was someone there with me, then I wouldn't be as cold somehow. Okay, so I have just put up a post on my Instagram asking if any of you guys want to come on a very spontaneous trip to Harbin with me and stay at my Airbnb and everything, so hopefully somebody answers that is not a creeper. Okay, the post has only been up for, I think, 45 minutes, and this girl named Becca already answered, and she is also from Florida, so I think we're gonna be the two least prepared people for the cold in all of Harbin, but we'll see how it turns out, and uh, you'll get to meet her soon. Guys, look what happened to my plastic bag that I had put some stuff in. It froze! I am walking on Central Street right now. It is kind of the, well, the central area of historic Harbin. You feel like you are in Europe and there's a lot of Russian architecture, a lot of very old buildings. It's a good place for people watching and yeah, just going and taking a walk. It has um, cobblestone. Airbnb that I got this time, it's all blue. <laughs> so I'm gonna be in Harbin for one week. For three of those days, I have someone coming to stay with me in this Airbnb together and go on a lot of adventures together. Here is Rebecca. Hello. Of course, something that I have to talk about is Harbin is very cold. I think that the lowest temperature it got while I was there was around negative 32 degrees Celsius. I have read in books before people describing stepping out into the cold and it feels like the cold just slaps you in the face. And I can unfortunately now confirm that that is not just another dramatic figure of speech. It's really true. When you go outside, it just feels like the air is attacking and ripping at your skin and uh, literally like you've been slapped in the face. So Becca and I have both agreed that one of the must-see things here in Harbin is this ice bar that's supposed to be in town, but research is very inconclusive and we're starting to wonder if it even exists. I don't know, this is really confusing because uh, some people say that there is an ice bar here, but um, some people say that it's closed forever. <laughs> And uh, some people say some people say they went and it wasn't there or it doesn't even exist. But there's photos, unless those are from somewhere else. I I have no idea at this point. Um, we can call the hotel. Now 
of course, the most famous thing to see in Harbin is the Snow and Ice Festival. It's the biggest one in the world, and Becca and I were both so excited to go see it for ourselves. I, I don't know really even how to describe it. In all of my travels, I have never seen anything like it. Hey guys, I'm about to go out and I need to get ready. First of all, you have to wear a lot of layers here. I think I wear like eight layers, so this is just the beginning. You need a lot of layers here. For my day bag today, I am using a bag by Waterfly. The great thing about this backpack, especially for me, is that it folds up so small. Ready to go. We are in the taxi now, about to reach the snow and ice world. We're getting so excited because we see it over there in the distance and it's literally a city of ice. Like spires, so skyscrapers of ice. This is so crazy. Yeah. I'm getting really excited. <laughs> it's gonna be so fun. Reach the entrance. It's just massive. This is so crazy. <laughs> We're kind of gonna film about our like impressions right now because our cameras were dying in the cold and we were so cold it's kind of hard to vlog there. Yeah. But <laughs> every time we tried to like vlog, our fingers were turning numb and frozen, <laughs> and we were yeah. just like, okay, bad idea. Put them yeah. back away. As soon as we went in, it was amazing. We just like, like we looked this way. There was a giant castle. Then we like this looked way. this way. We were just running, just screaming like, oh my gosh, oh my god. It was literally so cool. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Very cool. It's very, very cool. Very cool. <laughs> in the snow and ice festival of Harbin right now. It is the biggest ice festival in the entire world, and this is. So much more beautiful than I was even expecting. It's just amazing. Everything is made of ice here. Everything you see. bring it back to life. finding the heaters in the bathroom and just like trying to survive. We are literally frozen. The sun is going down. And our strength is going down. 
Yes. It is so cold. My camera keeps shutting down. I don't know if I'll have battery for much longer. We're just dying in the cold. This is so painful. But beautiful. Do you see this? What? I can't believe how amazing it is. A little bird shakes the weak right off of me, filling up. because that's really for real the whole reason why I even started just thinking of coming here researching and getting the trip together getting a sponsor for the trip and it's all thanks to you guys so if you hadn't commented I would never have come here it's all your fault that I'm so cold <laughs> no just kidding this is so amazing and beautiful and thank you guys so much please keep up your great recommendations There are so many snowmen! There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I'm walking in Stalin Park right now by the river over that way. That huge river is just frozen solid, which is so cool. So I'm gonna go check it out. I am walking on the river right now. So this is the Songkwa River and all of the ice for the ice festival was taken from this river. You can see bubbles underneath the ice, frozen bubbles and I've never seen anything like that before. It is absolutely freezing right now because of the wind chill on the river so it's difficult to even speak right now. Every time that I breathe, the, like the air freezes, any moisture freezes inside my lungs and then when I breathe out it's like melting same inside my nose so it's a very strange sensation oh my gosh it's so cold it's so uh, oh my god filming this past shot you just saw with one glove on, one glove off. Any time that you would take a glove off, it would pretty much be instant pain, but I had um, this hand exposed for quite a few seconds to film this shot, and I think with the wind chill, it just made everything a lot worse. So actually, I cut this shot, and I just yelled to Becca that we have to get inside immediately. So we both took off running. My hand was burning, like someone had set this sort of ice fire on my hand and no matter what I did I couldn't take my hand out of the fire that's kind of how it felt I was actually in such intense pain that I felt like I was going to throw up my hand had turned partially white this is actually very dangerous it was stage 2 frostbite I found out later still to this day actually this hand um, it still hasn't recovered yet I think this was like two or three months ago and it's not numb but it just doesn't have as much sensation as um, my other hand does. I can't feel everything on my fingertips especially. So it is still affected. Um, it can be a serious problem. It's just that the nerve endings are damaged in your skin. So think twice before you take your gloves off. On my research for this elusive ice bar, I've come across an address and it's pretty close by. So I'm just gonna go and check it out. Supposedly there's an ice bar right around here.
Okay, that was not an ice bar. Supposedly, the ceiling was inspired by the dome of an ice bar. It's not what it made me think of at all. It's not an ice bar. So the search continues. Right now, I am at St. Sophia's Cathedral in Harbin. There's a big square here where all these people are hanging out. And Rebecca is hiding from the cold for trying. This cathedral was built in 1907. Around the time that it was completed, there were 300,000 people living in Harbin and 100,000 of them were Russian. So it was a predominantly Russian town and it was considered a marvel of Orthodox architecture. It was one of the largest cathedrals in the Far East. So very notable at the time. Actually, when the PRC took over China, the Communist Party in 1949, they decided to hand control of this and all other Russian churches back over to the Chinese government. And as a result, the Chinese government closed the church and put a big wall around the cathedral. And that is how it remained for decades. And nobody actually knew it was here anymore. Everyone in town kind of forgot about it until there was an article that came out about it in the 1990s. And then people started to gain interest in it again and it was reopened as a cultural site of China. We are looking for lunch. It's so cold. <laughs> we gotta get out of the car. We gotta get out of here. I got warm. <laughs> to just go to the Shangri-La Hotel even though the employees there did not seem to know about any ice bar. That's where we had heard it was so we got in the taxi. Uh, in the taxi on the way there the guy got lost. He actually, I wish I had filmed this but I didn't. It was very dark outside anyway. He brought us to this kind of abandoned crumbling mansion looking place with like a big iron gate like you see in the movies. Becca and I were just looking at each other like what? Is this where it is? Like are we going to a haunted ice bar or what? It turned out that that was wrong and he did bring us to the Shangri-La. Of course Shangri-La, nice five-star hotel. We walk in the lobby. Where is the ice bar? The employees just kind of gesture down this hallway to the side so we go and it doesn't look like a place where an ice bar is gonna be but we just keep walking down this like kind of narrow like not fancy looking alleyway. We get to this door that just looks like some sort of emergency exit like sketchy door where maybe you might take out the trash or something and we were verifying with the employees like this door we opened this door are you sure and they were like mm -hmm, yeah at this point we had really no idea of what's gonna happen but we opened the door and went inside here goes nothing <gasps> So the ice bar is real. It's here. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. I don't know if we can it's say. It's really cold, but it's so cold.
Good morning guys. It is day five in Harbin and um, today is a warmer day so I don't have to wear my everything which is good for vlogging. And my camera isn't shutting down every 10 seconds, which is a plus. It is about five degrees, so, so warm outside. It might be a little bit surprising that one of the most popular foods to get here is ice cream, and I guess that there's no fear that it's going to, going to melt. Oh my gosh, I have come back to the St. Sophia Cathedral at night, and it is so beautiful. This is just such a fairy tale. It is just absolutely magic. It doesn't even look real as I'm walking up to it right now. This looks like something from Narnia. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Walking on Central Street at night right now, and at night it really just turns into a fairy tale down here because of all the Christmas lights everywhere, and um, it is just so pretty. And I don't know what I'm saying because I'm so cold. Many Jewish people came here from uh, Russia or Ukraine and the Jewish areas of town were very fashionable and wealthy and they were entrepreneurs in the area and very welcomed by the Chinese. I didn't know this, but actually China considers the only two um, remaining ancient cultures of the world to be the Jews and the Chinese themselves. So they feel this bond with the Jewish people and actually in history they have Helped the Jews a lot during the during World War II as well, welcoming them to Shanghai. This is a synagogue here, and it's amazing because they have signs that are in Hebrew, Chinese, Russian, and English. So it's a really cool combination of culture. We can't go inside because it's closed right now, but okay, that's it. I'm cold. So it is day nine in Harbin and I'm finally leaving. I was uh, ended up stuck here for a few extra days but it was fine. I had some time to work on some videos for you guys and uh, see everything that I really wanted to. My only uh, disappointment with Harbin was that it never snowed because if it's gonna be this cold it better snow. I wanted to see snow. There was supposed snow with the ice and snow festival but it was fake so kind of a letdown um, in nine days no snow the entire trip today was made possible by the company waterfly they were so kind enough to sponsor this whole trip to Harbin so that I could show you guys they are a company that specializes in making outdoor bags and equipment if you want to go on a hike or into the cold as well and they also have all eco-friendly products which is something that really drew me to their company go and check them out in the description below and thank you again waterfly so much for making it possible for me to go to harbin yay go and subscribe to becca's new yes. youtube channel I'm she new. lives in china where do you live i'm living in Wenzhou, which is about four hours south of shanghai by fast train she's been telling me her ideas for videos and they sound so interesting so Sounds I will be waiting for the video. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Chinese, peace out. Bye.